I want to ask you guys about Alvarez's legacy here at Wisconsin, because you've covered this department longer than I have, but just being around this state and talking to people, the, the feeling that I've, I've gotten talking to people is the Barry Alvarez kind of changed what Wisconsin's identity was. And that success on the fields obviously is a huge factor, but I think a bigger thing is just changing the expectation for so long before Alvarez was here, Wisconsin was kind of expected to be in one of those bottom tiers, football, basketball, not, if they had a good year, it was like, oh, cool. And then nobody really cared. I feel like Alvarez in football as a coach and then maybe became the AD kind of pushed that mentality department wide of, Hey, we're the expect expectation here is to win and to compete for the conference and national titles and some sports like that. I think that if you looked at, some type of overarching legacy for Barry Alvarez that might be it at Wisconsin is that he kind of changed what the mindset was of this athletic department. I, yeah, I would I agree with that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let me take the football part of it, Ty, and then maybe you can handle the AD part of it. Cause I do think, you know, there's two different worlds here and both of them have been very impressive, but you know, what, Back in 1990, when he was hired, or late 1989, um, it's impossible to put into words how irrelevant this program was. And just, you know, especially compared to now, it's just, it was, it was not on the radar and it was, it was basically dead. You know, there was 20,000, 15,000 people in the stands at Don Morton's last game. Um, and, you know, they always show that video of Barry Alvarez saying, you better get your season tickets now because um, there's not going to be any left. And, you know, when he said that, I wasn't here yet. I think I was still in high school or probably grade school when that happened. Um, but that is, it, it's crazy that he had the confidence to say that. And then, and then that he turned out to be right because it was such a major, major rebuilding job. Probably one of the best all-time rebuilding jobs. Bill Snyder at Kansas State, I think you can make a case for. Um, just in terms of turning something that was nothing into something that was, you know, a Rose Bowl winner four years later and, you know, a consistent presence in the Big Ten. Um, and now this is not just a Barry Alvarez. He, he doesn't deserve all the credit. Pat Richter deserves a lot of the credit. Um, sure. Donna Shalala, as a chancellor, deserves a lot of the credit for hiring Pat Richter and, and seeing that, hey, this athletic department can be the front door to this university. We need to make it good. And, and she hired Pat Richter. Um, Pat went out and hired Barry and made some other great hires. Um, but then, you know, Barry had a a really, really tough job of bringing that football program into relevance. And, and not only did he do that, but his fingerprints are still all over it that, you know, here we are 30 years after he took over, it's still a top 25, top 15, however you want to put it, program, and it's still sustaining success. So, you know, again, like that's the football part of it. And Todd, if you want to handle the AD part, because, um, you know, he's done a remarkable job in that area too. Yeah. And you mentioned something you touched on there in terms of, you know, when back in 90, he's talking about, you know, get your tickets now, that confidence. He's never lacked for confidence, right? I mean, that's that's one of the things that I think he's brought uh, since he's been here. And really, I, I see that connecting through the entire athletic department in terms of, uh, you know, know what you're good at and do it. That's I, what I feel like his legacy is in, in some ways here that um, I, I hear coaches and really it trickles down to players and too from other sports and, and not just the bigger sports, I, every sport referencing coach Alvarez and something he's said to them in, or some advice that he's given to them pretty much every season. There's someone saying, you know, this is what, what Barry ha has meant to us and, and what uh, his, you know, his philosophy is the, the don't flinch idea that that thing has really carried through um, the entire athletic department. And I think that's one of the uh, things that has it has, has built uh, what the athletic department is right now, that at least in his tenure as athletic director, that you, you, you have to be who you are. You have to know who you are. You have to accept it. And you have to be confident about it and know that you can get the job done with what you have. And I think that's when I look at around at, at a lot of the programs um, that have done well uh, at UW in the last two decades, uh, 15 years, um, that I think is one of the uh, uh, one of the underlying factors that, you know, maybe Wisconsin programs aren't the most well known in some sports, but they're known for 
for being hard nosed, for being, you know, gritty teams, for being teams that, that do the work, kind of that Midwestern ethos. Um, and to me, a lot of that comes back to Barry and a lot of that com- comes back to the people he's hired around him too, that have that same kind of work ethic. Um, because it, we credit Barry for a lot of the stuff, but a lot of the credit does go to those administrators that have been here for, for a couple of decades too, that have worked with them. Uh, some of the, the newer faces too, uh, that carry that down into the individual sports. Cause Barry is, is the guy at the top, but he doesn't necessarily work with every individual sport or even connect with uh, a, a lot of them on a day-to-day basis. And so I think having that, that team around him that, that believes in the same things has been really, really critical for that. Should mention here. This has been a love fest for him, and I don't. You know, I I think we need to be. I think we need to be, uh, you know, open and honest with our listeners too that it hasn't been a perfect run. Um, women's basketball. He's made two hires that have not worked out at all. They, you know, he took a chance when he fired Lisa Stone because he thought this program could elevate to another level, um, and it's gone way way down. You know, like I doing the numbers last week because that's a program that I don't follow. Um, all the time because of the other beat I have, but uh, those numbers are astoundingly bad um, when you win 20% of your Big Ten games over a 10-year period. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's been a, a not-so-successful story. The Gary Anderson hire, I think he would be the first to admit that was a bad hire, and he got lucky that Gary left for Oregon State when he did, and he could bring Paul Chris back and, and again, have a guy that knows this program and and – knows what it takes to win here. Um, he got a little bit lucky there. And I don't think, you know, I, I don't think that's, you know, I think everybody knows that a little bit. So it's, you know, it hasn't been a perfect run. No AD is going to be perfect, but I, again, like I'll, across the board, they've been pretty successful and sustaining, I'll say it again, sustaining success is not easy. If you look at other big 10 programs, there's a lot of this. Um, and, and this department has been very, very steady. Uh, and, and that's impressive especially for someone who saw how bad it was, you know, 30 years ago. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that Jim, because I wanted to talk about maybe some of the misses that he's had. And I think they're, they're easy to point out because they're, they've been in high profile spots. Like you mentioned the football, like the Gary Anderson. I mean, is it fair to call it a mistake? Obviously it was two pretty rough years. And then, you know, the, it took a few years for Paul Chris to kind of change the recruiting back to where what's going to succeed at Wisconsin. But I just think that when you look at the, the totality of what Alvarez has done, it's just those things become so glaring because it's like, man, like what happened? What were you thinking there? And you, know, you mentioned women's basketball too. It's just funny because it's like you've done so well other places and then those are a couple of big swings and misses. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a mistake for both parties. I mean, I think Gary Anderson probably should have done his homework on what it would have taken for his system getting JV – or getting – um JUCOs and getting kids that are borderline academics into school. Um, it just wasn't going to work here. And, and, and that homework process on both ends should have been done a little bit better. Um, it doesn't look like a glaring mistake in, in the long run because Gary Anderson went 19 and seven over two years. And there were some really good moments. He brought in Dave Aranda, who, who you know, was carried over to, to Paul Chris staff. And, and that 3-4 defense today is still a, um, a very important part of this program. Um, but I do think, you know, if Gary Anderson went to have left after two years, I think there would have been a downward trajectory in the program and, and, and they could be still feeling it to this day. I think the timing was good there. And that's why I think there was a little bit of luck involved. I mean, the other thing I think about in terms of if, if we're talking about things that uh, maybe didn't, uh, you know, didn't hit as well as, as people would like, uh, you do have to ask, you know, are, are, have at the big programs at football, uh, men's basketball, and I'll throw in men's hockey because that's what I cover. Have they reached the as much success as they could have? I mean, we talked about that before that um, at, at some levels, especially when you're comparing it to pre-1990, you have to, you know, accept that this is so much better than it was. And, you know, maybe that's a different conversation in, in men's hockey than, than uh, others because, you know, everyone looks back to the Bob Johnson, Jeff Sauer days as, you know, these, you know, great eras when they're in the tournament every year. And it's, uh, it's, it's a lot different in men's hockey than it's, it's a different in all the other sports too. But 
basketball has been close, but didn't get the job done. Football has been close ish, right. but never got to the playoff. Right. So, so those are the things I think you can, you can pick at is like, was the bar set high enough? What, um, and, and I don't know the answer to that. I think you could get fans on both sides, you know, arguing both ways of that. Um, but I do think that is one of the things you do have to, to keep in mind too, that there may, be, have, may have been a little bit more out there in terms of possibilities for this athletic program uh, than has been reached at, at the big programs, at big teams. And the, le- and the legacy is kind of a moving, it's kind of a moving thing too, right? No doubt. Um, Barry's going to leave and coaches he hired are going to continue to go forward. Um, if all those things that Todd mentioned, if Paul Chris delivers a college football playoff or, you know, can take this program a, another step up, um, then that enhances Barry's legacy. Um, you know, I cover men's basketball right now. And that's, a, that, that program is at a critical time um, because I still think the jury's out to some degree on, on Greg Gard. We're five and a half seasons in, um, and they've had one NCAA tournament win over the last four years. Um, most of the NCAA tournament success was in those first two years. They had, they're had they coming off a really bad season. They're, they're going from old to young, and it's kind of a crossroads. Um, you know, if Greg Gard can't, can't pull through the next couple years and, and kind of get this program back to where maybe it was when he took over, um, then that affects Barry's legacy because that's one of his big hires. And again, I don't know that, you know, we can go back and – and talk about that hire when it happened. I don't know that he had much of a choice based on what Greg Gard did that first year, um, but it's you know, it's it's not going to stop in whenever he steps down, whether the official date is June, June July, whatever. Um, there's going to be more out there that he's measured by. Yeah, and legacy is always kind of a moving goalpost, right? Because what do you what do you add to it? Like if three years down the line. Uh, something good happens with football. Like, does Barry, does Barry get credit for that? Yeah, I, I know it's a tough question, but I wanted to talk about that because when you're talking about somebody that's been in a, a university and a program like this for you know 30 plus years, it's kind of a to wrap it all up in one bow. It's, it's tough, but it's something that's going to be interesting to see how it, it evolves the next few years.